Hello everyone, in this video we will create a React application, React, Node.js, MongoDB application. We will upload it to the internet by using Heroku platform, we will use GitHub. And so let's start it. You know, I have created this step by step process to keep track of our progress. And the first thing that we should do actually is to go to our GitHub account and create a new repository. And here I will see it as project. Oops. Let's say project five. And add a git ignore file. And it should be node template. And create a repository. And then click on the code, copy the link. And now go to any place on your computer. If you are using Windows, you can type CMD by clicking the file path, and then you just need to git clone, and you will paste the URL that you copied from the GitHub account. And now, as you can see, our project five is here. And let's get inside the project five by saying CD project five. And here, the first thing to do is to create a React application because because it takes time so that we can do the other things while create my React React application is being created and then I will name it as front end and that's it so now we can minimize this and we better to open or we better to open here and now let's again type cmd but before that i just need to i just need to create another folder called backend and that's it and now let's let's make one step back and here i will say code project 5 i'm just opening the project folder on my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. If you are using Atom, you can say Atom Project 5. And type, click Enter. And now, as you can see, here is our folders. Here is the git ignore file. So the first thing to do is to add a server.js file inside the backend, and then leave it empty. And now go back to, go back to your command line and enter inside the backend folder be careful sorry enter but first we need to enter project 5 and then see the backend so be very careful that you are inside the backend folder on your command line and now i will say npm initiate npm initiate yes so that I'm answering yes to all questions. And now I will say npm install express save. And after that, there was another patch that I had to download. Uh, or maybe I can leave it for later. Just for the, yeah, so. I have created the package JSON file by saying npm initiate yes, and now we have downloaded the express package. Now we can create a simple server const express is equal to require express and const app is equal to express. And uh, you know, I advise you to do the same as I do. You can follow the code here, copy it. You can even give all the names as the, as the same thing. So that uh, at the end of the video, you will have a functioning project and that you will really learn on the way. So now I will say app get so that we can test our, our route if they are working. And here I will say AFN if you are using Visual Studio Code. AFN is going to give you an error function, request and response. 
and now go one line down and here just say response send and send a hello string and after that we can create the server here I will say I will just maybe a bit quicker Listen, you know we don't need the process EMV port for now, but it's a good exercise you know, to use it every time because one day you might need it. And here I will say const port number is equal to uh, server address and then I will say port and of course console log and I will use backticks and port is open on and dollar sign and port number so that's it for our for our server ser uh, for our simple server and let's check yeah, the, the front end has been created, so I can close this. Or maybe I can leave it now. And now I will say, first let's clear the command line. And now I will say, uh, node server JS. Why I am saying node server JS? It's because, it's because of here. My start script is node server JS. So node server JS. And port is open on 4000. That's a that's a good news. So let's check. And here I will say one two seven four thousand. And as you can see, it says hello. So everything is working fine. And now I will go back to here. I will exit the server, and I will check my document to see that I'm not missing anything. So I guess we have done all the steps here. Let's paint them to yellow and here as well. We made a test. And now we need to download a package called React Router Dome and then we will clean up the React application and then test it to see if it's working. And now my React application is here. And I will just close this and I will close this. And I will close the backend folder also. And now I will enter into front end. So as you can see, this is the front end. And first, maybe I can test if React application is working. Of course, you know, I need to enter inside the front. Let me show it to you. It gave me an error because I was trying to open the React application on the parent folder, but actually I need to go inside the front-end folder. So now if I say npm start, it should start in a minute. Let's wait, be patient, be patient. Just a few more seconds and as you can see react application is working fine so now let's open the code editor again we are inside the front end folder do you see so i will just make a cleaning here i don't need any of these files so i will delete and then go inside the public folder and also delete all the things that you are not going to be needing in the public folder, I only left index.html, and here I will also continue to delete many things here, and maybe this favicon link, and also these commands. I believe that's fine. Be careful, don't delete this, but you can delete no script. So we have a clean index.html, and now Let's cut everything inside the FCSS and delete it. 
and place everything inside the app CSS to index CSS. But of course, we don't again we don't need all of this, and we will just delete it and delete it and delete this code. You know, we are, we will have just a clean clean project to work with. Text align center and maybe background color should be something dark. I guess like last time it was magenta, maybe this time orange. So uh, maybe font size can be a bit bigger so that we can see. Font size I will say 35 pixel. And I believe we are we are done with the CSS here. And index.js you know report web vitals delete React DOM index CSS make it stay, delete these lines as well, and close it. And app CSS, you know, delete everything inside the header, including the header, and delete the logo, and you know, place some text here. React is working. Save it and close it. And now if I It says that app CSS cannot be found. It's true because I need to delete the app CSS as well. So now I guess it's fine. As you can see, it says React is working. We have a clean React project to work with. We have already created our Node.js project. So let's check our steps, what we need else. So we will create three components. All right. So let's create three components inside. There is it, yeah. Here we are still inside the front end folder. So click on the, just a moment, click on the source, click on the new folder icon, and say components. And inside the components, create a folder called articles.js, and maybe another, uh, sorry, another file called. This is article.js, and the other file should be called maybe home.js, and the another one maybe, uh, what was, I don't know why these untitled, and then the other one maybe about.js. So we have three components, and RFC, I guess. It, RFC means React Functional Component, it's a shortcut. If you are using Visual Studio Code, you can download the relevant package to use those shortcuts. It's very practical. RFC. As you can see, we have a functional component right now. Just to place the export default statement here. And I guess that's done. So now let's copy it. The other two, fold, the other two components. And articles, of course, should be articles and articles and articles and home should be home and home and home so let's save everything and yes it's going fine we have created the components now let's check what else we need to do yeah we will create the we will make we will create the routing so i will just copy paste all the lines here so that we are not going to be losing time and let's go back to our app.js app as you can see our previous app.js was this so i will just delete it and paste our new app.js and we are importing the routing but first you know i forgot to download this react router dom package so let me go here. There is some errors here. I don't understand. Yeah, because React Router DOM. Okay. Let's close it. Clear it. So npm install React Router DOM and save. It will be just a work of maybe 5 to 10 seconds. I mean, we will just be waiting for 5 to 10 seconds. And now, I guess everything is done here. These are, these are, I mean, this, this is the new syntax. Before it was switch, now it's route, uh, root and route, uh, root and roots. 
and there is everything here we have created the roots according to new syntax so we will just be saving this and closing it and now let's go back to the front end folder clear everything now say npm start let's wait it will take a few seconds again let's wait well it's taking long actually maybe there's an error somewhere yeah there is it now the home page is working let's check about page about page is working let's check articles articles page and root is working so our react application is done let's paint out this area as well so you know I mean you can just stop the video and copy these you know I mean like type it by yourself it, it's gonna help you know I mean you don't need to uh, like copy paste it from somewhere just type it by yourself and it's gonna help and what I was doing yeah I was checking the document now yeah the port number is 4000 I have already given it you know if your port number is the same port number with your react application which is 3000 generally react is using 3000 on localhost so just be careful that here this port number is different than 3000 and now now actually we will connect react application to node.js server so i will just copy paste this this uh, this script here and you know it's a code snippet or I mean, as you want as you wish to call it and now let's close the front end folder let's go to package json file as you can see here is the scripts you know just delete all of it and paste this one so this is the new script and we have server, we have client, we have due. I mean, you can just stop the video as I say, this is the main step when you connect your React application to your Node.js application. So from now on, I'm not gonna be saying Node server JS, but I will say npm run do, which is gonna be, which is gonna be connecting, which is gonna be starting both Node.js and React at the same time. So you can stop the video and copy paste these lines. I will save it. And and also you know you better to put this line above the Slint Slint uh, Slint line in your package JSON file. So I will just or maybe I will copy it from here. And now I will go again to the package.json file. Where is it? Was it in the front end? Yeah, it's here. So in the front end packages, and it's not in the back end packages, and it's in the front end packages, and find the slint line and paste this proxy, which is gonna help you to avoid some course errors. If you don't add it, it's fine. It's gonna work. Your your, your application is gonna work, but just this this line is only to be on the safe side. And let's close this. So now, let's test. I will just go to. You. Now I can close this. Yeah, as you can see now, I'm the I'm in the back end folder, not in the front end. Pay attention to here. And here if I say npm run build, I'm oh, sorry, npm run do. There was an error somewhere, of course, you know, because I said npm run start from, you know, it was, I copied it from my previous work. So I need to find the package.json file here. It's not front end one, it's front end, and the rest is true. You know, it's two dots, not a single dot. 
it's, it's two dots. It's only that you delete the number one at the end. Save it, close it. Now let's clear the command line and npm run do. It will take time. Let's wait. Now somehow it's heavy. But you know React applications they are actually heavy, I can see. So let's check a route. It's working. So right now the connection has been set actually between between the React application and Node.js application. And of course you know we we, we should add some more lines so that we can so that we can test and see uh, you know we can send some data from our react from node.js to react application so for that first go to your server.js file and paste these lines here I'm going to be deleting this and deleting this So as you can see, we already have Express, we already have App, and yeah, these two lines they are for post and put method, and this line is going to be used uh, is going to be used for your static folder. And apart from that, you know, you can just again, as I say, stop the video and copy copy those lines. I will also add this. Maybe you remember this from our previous example previous exercise so instead of sending a simple hello string this time I would like to send maybe I will leave the route for now or maybe I will just say test so as I have created the route which is called test and it's basically sending an object to the react application so react application is gonna use the fetch method to get this data from the Node.js application. So let's now close the server and go back to, yeah, we have done this part. Let's paint this. Let's paint this. And now let's copy all these lines here. And let's close the back end. Let's close the front end. Why we have front end one? It's because of my mistake. Now it's front end. And now click on the source. Click on the components. You know, maybe we can place that data from Node.js to home component. So let me see. It starts with import. Yeah. So now I can delete all the lines here. And I will just paste whatever I have copied. And you can again stop the video and code this. You don't need this commands here. And that's it, you know. Here we are using the map method to print. I mean to to to, to display the result of our fetch data on the React component which is called home and which is pointing to home root so now let's check the server just to be sure that well I have say test maybe I shouldn't say I shouldn't say test I shouldn't say test I will just put the slash here or maybe it can be test no harm is going to be from that actually let's save it and now let's go back to home. I will say test and I will save it. And you know that's gonna work. So let's test. I mean, this is gonna show us if our React application is really fetching data from Node.js, if the connection between them is set, and if everything is functioning well. So be sure that you have saved everything. And now let's go back to 
well I guess I don't even need to restart the server I can just check it here so if I delete the articles as you can remember I have I have established that data connection from the home component and home component is pointing the root uh, sorry the whole uh, I mean this home page root so if I click nothing will happen for some reason let me see well I guess I need to restart the server sorry guys let's exit everything CLS and npm run do it's again gonna, gonna take a few seconds be patient be patient be patient and now let's wait let's close the previous one by the way yeah as you can see it's something in zero why something in zero let me show you on the server file because here I have something and here I have zero so I'm actually displaying these two these two value key value pairs on home component as you can see record age record is the result of my map uh, method you can name it anything else you can say result record whatever you want so age is the is that is that is the key on that object and ID is the other key on that object so it's something and zero I guess it was so yeah that's how it is and as I have only one it prints only one line I have because I have just one object so let's save this close it and actually we have done the hard part now we will create we will create the Mongo collection uh, Mongo connection so to do that first install the Mo first install the mongoose package you know, we'll exit everything here. I will clear the command line. Be very careful. I am on the backend folder. And now I will say npm install mongoose save. And after that, let me check the other steps. We will go to our MongoDB account. So my account, I have already signed into my account, but if you don't have an account, just create it. And you can use it for free. I mean, you don't have to pay anything. Unless, you know, I mean, like you build some professional web applications. So here, you know, I will just create a new folder or new project. You can follow the steps that I'm doing now and name it as, you can name it anything, project 10 and click on next and just skip this part just wait now here it's build a database as you can see so let's build our database and here you know you don't have to pay anything for now because this is just for test purposes so you can click on the shared be very careful that you click on the shared and create it and now you can choose any region that you think is close to you. Now we'll choose Bahrain. You know those service providers actually they, they don't matter for for the purpose of this exercise. I will choose Bahrain. I will create the cluster. And here you can just enter a username. So I will I will say Schwan one two three and as a password i will say one two three four five six dash dash dot dot so you can see my password it's one two three four five six dash dash dot dot and this is the username so don't forget your username and password copy just in case and then create the user and after that uh-huh so we need this ip address Mm -hmm. So you know, I guess I'm. I will, if I enter these, zero zero. If I enter these, it's gonna give me. This means that I can connect this database from anywhere in the world. But I'm not sure about this number of zeros. Let's create. 
yeah I guess it works it's 40 slash 0 and now let's finish and close go to databases so this is gonna take a few more seconds let's say in the meantime we are not gonna be losing time go to your backend folder but of course not on the not here but on the code editor so close the components close the source close the front end and now we are in the back end then create a new folder in the back end named db db is the short for database and press enter so as you can see it automatically recognizes this folder as a database folder i mean this is the database icon so you should also name it as the same thing and then i will now here create two files one of them is going to be connection.js and the other one is going to be it's going to be my schema schema is going to be uh, the way you shape your data before saving in mongodb let's say because yeah i guess you understand what i mean so yeah, I mean this is connection, this is schema, and I have. Let me see if we have done anything here. Yeah, yeah, we have followed all the steps here. And for your information, yeah, it's four zero. And for your information, I'm gonna be uh, putting this also in the video description, you know, to help you more. And now, let's check. Yeah, it's ready. So our cluster is ready. Now I can click on the connect, and if you are if you have Compass, MongoDB Compass, Compass is a graphical user interface. It's a program on your computer. If you have Compass, you can click on this. If you don't have, download it, please, because Compass is very useful. If you plan to use MongoDB, you should definitely have Compass, and click here, and say I have MongoDB Compass, and copy this link and then you know what else we will do we will open here but of course i also need to open here so let's paint this area i have created these two these two files and then let me see if anything is missing nope let's paint this and yeah now i will copy this code here and now I will paste it, not in the schema, but in the connection. Connection is going to be, as, as the name itself is telling, it's going to be how my Node.js application uh, will connect to MongoDB database. So here, it, as you can see, we will delete this line here because we have our URL. And some in some applications, you will see URI, which is probably the better way to name it but you can use the url url also i mean it's yeah you can use the url url or yuri it's up to you so this is already you know this is my ready code when i connect something uh, to mongodb and here you know it's totally up to you you can you can name anything you can say successfully connected or maybe you can just make it short yeah and these two strings here the first one is for successful connection and the second is one then the second one is if anything fails so that you will understand that something happened with your connection and here you know in place of URL and these are the connection parameters and uh, what they mean actually I mean they are just some like parameters and this one is I guess this one was for the deprecation and here yeah. and then you will use you will use these connection parameters variable here and your URL here and then you will connect it it's gonna be asynchronous and yeah that's how you will be connecting so let me save let me copy this link again paste it here be careful there should be codes around it and my name is already it's already here but my password is not so i will delete everything including this angle brackets 
and I will say one, two, three, four, five, six, dash, dash, dot, dot. So maybe you remember that was my password. And let's now save it and close the connection. And and now let's go to schema. You know, it will be maybe a bit faster because I guess if I don't, it will become a two hours video. And now here is the schema, JavaScript, and again, type this by yourself. And here I am down, I'm like importing Mongoose, and then I'm creating, uh, I'm creating a new schema, and I will name it as input schema, and this input schema, uh, you know, this, this I will explain, and this, and then I am uh, creating a model from this schema, and then I'm exporting it. And the, the input text type string here is because, you know, I will create an input area in the React application and whatever I insert in that input area and when I click on the button save or send, it will send it to Node.js and from Node.js it will go to MongoDB. So my input area is going to include, I mean, will include only strings and whatever is inside the include area, it should be treated as strings and it should be saved in the dat database like that. So that's why I named it as input text and the type is string. And the input doc, uh, you can name it anything else because everything on the MongoDB database is a, is a, uh, all the record is a, they are a document. So you can name this anything. I named it input doc and let's save it. So that's it, you know, we are not going to be opening the database again, we will just close it and yeah, so let's now check. Of course, you know, we need also these three lines in our server JS. Let me show it to you. So here is our server JS, here is the previous two lines, but now we will add three more lines. This time they are going to be for our uh, MongoDB, MongoDB database connection. So as you can see, it's 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 pointing to folder file path of connection, and then the schema, and then we are using the connect DB to connect uh, them into to connect to our database. And this is just a name, actually. I mean, you can name this anything else, but I guess connect DB is somehow maybe it's a com maybe maybe it's a uh, it's used by every, everybody. So that's it, guys. You know. But save it. You know what I want to do? I would like to test it now. But let's make sure we saved everything. And now we'll say npm run do. So the important thing is that we should see our successfully connected string here. You see? Now the port is open and we successfully connected MongoDB. So now it's going to open our React application, but we don't need it now. We can just close it. And then, yeah. And now we have seen it. And now we can go to front end. Yeah. This is actually important because now we will create an input field and then create some functions to send our data and to receive data. And I will just copy this and I will go to articles component. Let me say components and articles. You know, articles before it was just a simple component. Now let's delete it and let's paste our new component here. You can start the video and type it by yourself. Here is a simple use state variable, and this is the input field. That's how you are like storing the input field value in a variable, and and that's it, you know. And there is this handle submit function, but of course, it's not going to be this yet because we also need to create this handle submit function here. So let's go here again. And now let's copy it. And here, you know, just right under input text variable, let's create our handle submit. 
you know we will prevent the default we will prevent the page from being refreshed after each form submit event and then we will say const new tax is equal to input tax what is input tax input tax is this variable and what's inside the variable it's gonna be this because we set input tax to whatever we enter inside the uh, input area and then we will fetch we will use the fetch method it can be asynchronous or synchronous it doesn't matter so here I'm using the synchronous one to fetch and then we will fetch the data to articles through it which we haven't yet created but I'm going to be creating now and of course it's going to be a post method don't forget that and the content type this is just a parameter let's say and the body yeah now I guess it's done you can again take your time stop the video and type this and later is it is it finished no because we need to create a post uh, a post route for the back end so that this whatever we sent on the front end we sent from the front end is gonna work so let's go close the front end let's go to server JS and here you know we will create the post route and it's create so let's check if our Actually, we, we need to name it as articles, not create. So, fetch articles and let's fetch, let's post articles. And here, you know, it's from my previous work. And here I will say model input. This model input is referring to this schema here, model input. And we are actually you know getting whatever is being sent from the react we are getting the request body and then uh, response ending and then console log I mean we are creating the data uh, by using the model and then we are finishing the process we are sending a console log uh, string and that's it and now let's save it again Let's check our document. Let's paint this because I guess now it's time for testing. So we will close everything and CLS. And let's make sure that everything is saved. And now let's say npm run do. Sweet guys port is open 4000 everything is working I believe so now this is the home page but of course I need to go to article through it as you can see here enter any text so let's enter any text any text you can click on the save article or you can press the enter and now you think that maybe we saved it or not of course you don't know I mean I mean nobody I mean we don't know we don't see if this any tax is been now I will click on the button also it's been now saved to the database or not so that's why you know this uh, MongoDB compass is useful because now if I go to my connection if I copy this URI and then paste it to here and connect it you will see now as you can see here is the admin local and test list. so let's check test and let's click on this as you can see it's any text it's any text now we have two records why because first I have clicked on enter and then I have also clicked the button that's why now we have two records so as you can see our react node.js mongodb connection has been set it's working just fine but uh, am I gonna leave it here no we will also create uh, some more code in our front end uh, in our front end articles.js component so that we can see 
what we sent. So now let's I will just paint this and I will you know I will just grab all of it. Don't worry, you know it's not something hard, I will explain it to you. And let's close this. Yeah, so now let's open the front end. Click on the source, click on the components, click on the articles. So this was the previous version of articles component. So let's delete it and paste it again. So you might be wondering what has changed here. I will tell you. First we have imported use effect and I have started to use the, the asynchronous version of fetching data and now I have added I have added my inputs this one here and uh, it's a it's a variable and then this is actually this is gonna get the data from MongoDB da database and it's gonna display the data that we get from MongoDB database on our React application. How are we gonna do that? We will use the Node.js to do that. From MongoDB to, no to Node.js and from Node.js to our React application. So, I mean, this is for fetching data from Node.js that we can use in our React application. And this, this was the previous uh, handle submit function nothing has changed with that it's used for post these use these are used for get and this one is used for post so it's like two different things and here you know we have our form nothing has changed with this the only thing changed is that I have created another view I can delete this space I have maybe some indentation I have created another view here as you can see and inside this view and inside this view there is this map method you know I mean this is a conditional rendering I can just take it out but if I take it out sometimes the errors can happen because uh, because of a reason you know I, I will just put it back again because imagine that I am starting this application as a as like fresh there will be nothing inside my inputs. There will be nothing from from uh, inside the database because to put something in the database, I first need to post it, and before posting it, I cannot render it. So I am using this conditional rendering because it means that the database, if database is not empty, then I can I can get the data from database. So I hope you understand this. It's being yeah, and you can take your time, you know, I will just go slowly down so that you can copy it. Okay, you can stop the video and copy it. It's nothing hard. It's a great exercise. So let's save this. And we are using map function to print the data that we're going to be importing from MongoDB. And after that, you know, I need to go to backend server and then here I will click on the backend, I will click on the, I will create this new root. This time, as you can see, it's AppCat. Where are we going to use this AppCat? AppCat is going to be used here. I just mentioned it to you. Opa. Yeah, AppCat is going to be used for this part. This is app get part and this is app post part. Okay. So this is the app get and it's we are again fetching uh, we are like for articles root. We are we are presenting the data that we are getting from MongoDB database and yeah we are making them ready to use. So this is it. Let's save it. Let's check if anything is missed. No, we will test it. You know, we are approaching the end. Actually, this is a very nice project. If you have, if you have come this much far, that's a good thing. So now let's close it. Clear the command line. Let's say npm run do. Now let's wait. 
a few seconds. And as you can see, it's here. Now if I say, uh, what was I was going to say, I will say articles. As you can see, it already has printed the, pre the, 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 the text that we have inserted previously. It's now getting these two strings from database. So I will enter something else. I will say apples and save article. And then if I refresh it, as you can see, it's apples. So now these three strings, they are coming from database, actually. It's, it's your, our application is working. Our application is finished. Congratulations, guys.